Hello everybody, it's Mary with Stamps and Lingers and it is Saturday night at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, which means it is time for a Facebook Live video. I'm just going to double check that I am transmittalating over here. It looks good. I see my arm moving, so that's a good sign. And we will get started in just one hot second. Alrighty. All right, so here's the card that I gave you the sneak peek of. Um, it uses the poinsettia petals, which is in the current annual catalog, so easy peasy. And then the card, the uh, DSP that I've used, hi, Jean, hi, Bree, hi, Debbie, and Debbie. Two Debbies all at once, came up same time. Hello, Brooke. Um, you can see this is the Heart and Home DSP, which is one of the new items coming in the January to June 2021, uh, 2022. How many months will it take before I use the right year, do you think? Coming up in the new catalog in 2022. And, of course, if you buy one of my uh, paper shares, you will get some of this to play with. Hello, Kathy. Good to see you, my friend. Hi, Donna. Hi, Sylvia. Hi, Glenda and Beth and Faith. Appreciate that. Yay, another Christmas card. Exactly right. And since I made a sample and I'm going to make another one tonight, I get two, two, two for the price of one. But let's go ahead and get started. There's kind of a few steps. It's not, none of it's very difficult. And I have done some pre-embossing and pre-stamping just to help us out time-wise. But I kind of like this little sentiment banner that I've made. So we're going to play with that in just a sec. All right, so let's get started. I'm going to set this aside and put that right there and get out my die cuts. This is my, for my sentiment. And there's my envelope. And then I've got my basic gray card base. So I did the thing that I always do. Not not always. I don't always do it, but I certainly did it today. I um, very carefully made a beautiful inside liner for my card, but I made it very carefully as a portrait when I have a landscape card because I don't do a lot of landscape cards, so it... It occurred to me after I had gotten everything because I embossed on the inside of this thing. I got it all. Uh, yay, 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 yay. So hopefully I will remember to do it, you know, this away. This a hoozy. This away. Right here. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and um, uh, adhere this. Hi, guys. Hey, Tara Beth. Tara, how are you? Sorry, I didn't mean to call you Tara Beth, but that's how your name came up and it just popped out. We got anybody from. The Kentucky, Arkansas area. I hope I hope none of you were affected by those god awful tornadoes last night. I saw a thing that said that one tornado, and I can't imagine this. That's just it's crazy. But they said one tornado was on the ground for 270 miles. What in the world? In the world? Okay. The first thing I'm going to do before I get out my card cuts. Hi, Lynn. Um, hi, Sarah, is I'm going to take the little pine bough image from Poinsettia Petals, and I'm going to stamp it a few times around on the DSP in Garden Green, okay? So, obviously, I know where I want it because I've already made one of these, but what you would want to do is cut out all of your die cuts and then go ahead and dry fit everything, and then figure out where you wanted to stamp your pine boughs. So what we're doing here is we're adding a layer without a layer, if that makes any sense. So it's part of our collage, but it's not adding any weight. It's not adding any thickness, but it is adding a little more oompa pa Pa, pa. I don't know why I started doing that. That was just weird. That was just weird. <laughs> All right, we'll set that aside now. Sister-in-law experienced but was not harmed. Well, that is good at least. That is good at least. Yeah, we had, it was really warm here all day, and then now it's um, dropped down into the 50s, the high 50s, but, you know, I don't know what it's going to do. It, it doesn't look like we're going to get anything severe, so... So that is good. Okay, now, before you came, this is what I did here. This is Cherry Cobbler cardstock. And what I did is I embossed the large, medium, and small flowers. 
in gold on that cherry cobbler and heat emboss them. And then I let it dry slash cool so that the embossing, you know, embossing when you first get done and it's still kind of warm, you can smear it. So don't rub it when it's still warm. Let it set so that it gets set up good. And then I cut them with their dies. Now, what's fun about the poinsettia set is you can do two things. You can stamp the flowers like I've done and cut them out with these outline dies. Or you can actually just make flowers that already have this embossing. So all you do is you just put both of these dies together on the cardstock and you can just zoop, zoop, and you'll get an embossed image very similar to these holly leaves which is how I did them not with the not with the flower dies no with the holly dies so you can see these holly dies do the same thing so what you do is in one pass you are cutting out the leaf and also getting the embossing on that hey Amy hi Julianne Appreciate you joining. You're welcome. I'm so glad you got your catalogs. I hope you have fun looking through. I hope you have fun. All right. So that's what I did. This one, I did not use the embossing for the leaves. I got it all from the, stamp, the stamping of the image. Okay. So I cut them out. And what we're going to do now is I'm just going to use some liquid glue and I'm going to adhere them together. Hi, Donna. Appreciate you joining from the UK. We're just, I'm just twirling them like that so that, you know, they aren't overlapping. Nobody wants overlapping leaves, petals, whatever. You know what I mean. You know what I mean. Okay. So we're going to hold that down for just a second and let it kind of get adhered. While I do, while it does that, I'm going to do a little bit of work on my leaves. These are kind of... Even with the embossing, they're a little one-dimensional. So what I did is I took my dark mint macaron. See, look what I've done here. <laughs> Can you even tell? No. I have a dark on one end and a light on the other, so I don't have any idea which is which. Okay, look. Let's take this off and this off. Oh, my gosh. I took off way too many caps there. Okay, there we go. There we go. Okay, so these are the, that's the light one. So what I did is I took the dark... And I just kind of added some shading to the embossing. Really, really staying within the lines. It's, it's very important that this be very, very neat. Really all we're doing is we're just adding some color and a little bit of, well, texture without any texture. Hey, Lorianne, appreciate you joining. All right, and now I'm taking the other end and coloring the whole shooting match. Like that. We're going to do it here. We're going to do it on all three of them. Because doing just one makes no sense at all. You guys will be glad, I'm certain, to know that I actually... Got some of the baking done that is on my list. Not all, but some. The stuff that needs to mail, I have just about got done. I have one more thing to get finished, and then hopefully I can get everything to UPS on Monday. And maybe they'll even get it by this Christmas. Who knows? Weirder things have happened. Okay, so now as that kind of dries, I'm going to come back and add a little more to the inside. Like that. What happens is, as this dries, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to lift it up and show you here in just a second. Can you see how it's, it's kind of just a little bit mottled? It's not so flat. So remember how it was just kind of flat, looked like a piece of cardstock that I had cut into a leaf. So, you know, yeah, but Karen, you're going to make 5.2 million dozen cookies. I'm going to make like five or six or seven dozen maybe. Okay. So yeah, it's not the same at all. All right. So I've got that and I'm just going to do one more little bit on each of these. And then I'll let it set for a second and see what it how it works out. Okay. Now you can sit there like that. 
Okay. I also took one of my, I love berry dies, berry dies like this. So, you know, the, um, the brushed metallic cardstock, this is very exciting. The brushed metallic cardstock is carrying over. You will not see it in a written catalog again until we have another catalog come out with it in it, but you'll be able to order it from the online store. Okay. It has gold, brass, and copper in it. And I've used all three colors on this one. My, um, the inside of my, the little tiny petals for the inside part of my flower are the bright gold. And then I also used, it's hard for me to know. I'm not entirely sure. I think this is the brass one, the lighter of the two other ones. I cut two of those and then two of the bronzy copper ones. Okay, so basically cut two berries from each of the two that are not gold. And then you have to get that hanging chad out. It's very important to get the hanging chad out. That chad hung. It wanted to hang right there. Get down, get down, get down, get off. Get down, get off, get down, get off. I don't know why I am singing that. But I just realized I probably ought to go ahead and... Uh, no, you know what? I'm going to wait. I need to wait for those. That's right. I knew I was I was right, and I didn't even know I was right. Right? Okay. Now, let me show you the sentiment. I kind of like this. So... You're going to eat five to six dozen. I think that's fair. I like that. Everybody's been cooking. Everybody's getting ready. You know what's so interesting? Christmas is another one of those things with long lead up, right? It's really long lead time. It takes forever to get ready. And then, and then that day, boom, gone, done. And then 364 days before the next one. It's weird how that happens. We spend way more time getting ready than we do actually at Christmas. Okay, so this is the Heart and Home DSP. It's one of the wood. You can see it's not the same wood, okay? This is the wood with the green on the back. So it's got the narrower planks. This is wide plank flooring. This is narrower plank flooring. What I'm doing is I am stamping Merry Christmas right in the middle of one of the planks, as straight as I can make it with my semi-calibrated eyeball, like that, okay? And then I'm going to very slowly, dang it, this is the oh, really the only time of year I wish I lived in New Jersey, but I don't actually wish I lived in New Jersey. I'm just, I'm totally, totally don't want to live in New Jersey. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut that plank out. And so I am cutting on the outside of that line because I want to still see the gray plank line. This is probably shiplap. Probably shiplap. All right. And I'm not going to need nearly that long, but I'm going to leave it long because that gives me options. Options are important. Okay. Oh, I can hear it's starting to rain pretty good now. All right. So I've got that cut out. I'm going to take my gray marker. What's wrong with New Jersey? It's the white stuff that gets on the ground so routinely. I am not a fan. What I'm doing here is I am edging the side. So what I'm I'm really doing is making that gray line more pronounced, okay? Because my fussy cutting wasn't perfect. I know you're shocked by that because, you know, I am the queen of fussy cutting. All right, so I'm just doing that. And now with that done, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn around in my chair and I'm going to emboss this in the timber embossing folder. And I'm going to emboss it horizontally like this. This is another one of those things that's carrying over. You won't be able to see it in a catalog, but you will be able to order it online, okay? All right, so hang on just a second. I'll be right back. I'm gonna go ahead and emboss this. Because that just make it just makes it all the more woodsy to be embossed, to have wood grain DSP embossed in a wood grain folder. It's like 
it's like the circle of life or you know something like that it's the circle of embossing and the other thing that it does is it breaks down those fibers a little bit and I can make it do that like a little banner so I'm going to first cut one end off cut my snip my banner end in like so uh, repeat my yeah Debbie I'll bet the weather's good there in Florida give that a little do right there and then I'm kind of going to go ahead and do a little dry fitting so I can see how small to make my, let me put this, these aside, because that's making you think they're not, that I don't know what I'm doing. They're making you think I don't know what I'm doing. Okay. So I'm going to put some of these in like so, a couple of those in like this. Okay, and then this guy's gonna be up here. Okay, so all I'm really doing is kind of getting an idea of how long I want my banner to be, right? So I think I could safely cut it right about there. And then I'm going to curl it a little bit like that. So I'm curling down, I'm curling up, I'm curling down. I've got some ups and some downs. Life is all about the ups and downs. Okay, but you don't want to go very far with any of the ups or the downs or you'll have like weirdness. So now it's going to lay like that. And I'm just going to use glue right there. And so this will be loose and this will be loose. And then the glue, of course, will be in the flower. So that way you get kind of a kind of a I don't know how in the world I got wood to do that. Oh, I know. I probably bought it at Lowe's. <laughs> that was a little woodworker's joke. Hey, Rosemary. Appreciate you joining. All righty. So now let's go ahead and start adhering some pieces and parts, shall we? Let's do. Let's make them stick down. And what I do like to do, I've mentioned this a time or 12, is I like to lay it on my card base. So that way I know how far off of the card front I can go without inadvertently getting too big for my card base. Oops, hanging Chad, hanging Chad. Chad, why are you doing that hanging right there? Why are you hanging there, Chad? Don't hang there, Chad. Chad, Chad. Okay, so I'm just gonna use a little bit of liquid glue and start building my collage. I mean, technically, I started building my collage when I, when I was stamping those, uh, those doohickeys right there. The doohickeys. The green ones. The green doohickeys. Sometimes we call those pine boughs. Other times we can't think of it, and so we call them doohickeys. Just saying. All right. I'm going to sit up a little bit. I'm getting all reclinified, like I'm all relaxed and stuff, and I needed to sit up and act like I was paying attention. All right, and we'll put that there like so. I think I'll move that over a little bit. Move over there a little bit. There you go. There you go. It's paper and glue and ink, people. Make it do what you want it to do. There we go. But see, that's just barely okay, so I'm going to make it a little less barely. How about that? Twizzers. I'm just going to pull it down. Well, maybe I am. Come here. Wake up. Get up. You know, if I was wanting that to be already stuck, it wouldn't have been. There we go. Now we're more better. That's a more better. That's a more better right there. There we go. Stay. Now stay. Stay right there. Okay, give this a little curl, and we'll put this right here, like so. And we'll give that a little curl, or I will forget it. It's garden green. The green is garden. The green is the garden. 
So these are mint macaron. This was just mint macaron cardstock that I cut and embossed with the poinsettia dies. And then I colored them with my dark uh, mint macaron Stampin' Blend. All right, just to give them a little bit of, they, they just have a little bit more life when you do that than if you left them plain, okay? You could leave them plain if you wanted, but I didn't want it, so I didn't, because it's my card. And I prefer them to have a little bit of extra color. Little bit of extra color, little bit of extra color, okay. And then this is a little guy. I am so happy that this brushed cardstock is carrying over. I cannot even tell you. It is one of my very favorite things. I love it very, very much. Very, very much. I love it very, very much. Okay, so that's that. And now I'm going to adhere my flower. And I'm going to adhere it right over there. Yep, that looks good to me. That looks good to me. Yes, I actually, they were green mint macaron cardstock, and then I cut, colored them more with the mint macaron Stampin' Blends, the dark one. That is what I did. That is what I did. Okay, so we're gonna put that down like so, and then we're going to figure out the placement of our sentiment like this. Now the trick here, I'm going to glue my two little centers. Remember this was also, these were cut out with the from the gold in the brushed metallic cardstock. I'm just adhering those together with some liquid glue. And sometimes the foil takes a minute, guys. And what I want to do is I want to set this such that it's over the center of the flower but my sentiment is like that. So, you know, you can see it and stuff. Cause you, you, I do like, I don't mind covering up parts of sentiments sometimes, usually with like twine or something, but more like more of the time I prefer to be able to actually read the sentiment. Cause otherwise what was the, see what I mean, jelly bean? It wants to be persnickety. Stay right there. Stay right there and dry. Think about what you've been doing. All right. So I'm going to put some liquid glue under. Ah, can you hear the wind and the rain? Yeah. It's, it's blowing right outside my window. I'm putting liquid glue right on the end and right in the center that has the down. You can see. So I've got glue here. And I've got glue here. And I'm just going to put that like that. And then I'm going to set this back and twist it however I need to clear my sentiment. And because it bugs me, I also like to be sure I can't see the edge, the end of my sentiment banner. That may not bug you, but for some reason that bugs me. And then I thought I might also try to make this straight. Because straight is always better. Okay. Thanks, Karen. Now I'm going to take a pumpkin pie holiday rhinestone. Because I'm pretty sure that the inner, inner, the inner area of a poinsettia is pumpkin pie colored pretty sure of it. And so that's what it got. And then I have whoa, brush metallic adhesive back dots, which are also carrying over. Again, you won't see them in a catalog, but you will be able to order them. And I'm going to take some of the small gold ones. I'm going to put one on the end of my banner. Obviously, I have glue on my finger. I have some glue on my finger. And then I'm going to take another couple and strategically place them around my collage, like so. Yeah, yeah, I loves me these dots, I do. I really, 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 really do. 
I really, 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 really do. I do, I do. And that's it. That's it for the card front. Really not very difficult, okay? So don't be afraid to try banners. It does help. You don't have to, but I've found it helps a little bit if you've embossed it because it kind of helps to break up the um, the fibers of the paper. Yes, poinsettias are, in fact, poisonous. Yes, they are. The good news is, is most of the time they really won't eat them, but cats are so goofy. They'll sometimes just chew on them because they're goofy and stuff. Okay, so here's what we're going to do on the inside. I'm going to take my pine bough, and I'm going to stamp twice in the horizontal landscape mode, not in portrait. And I'm going to stamp here. And then I'm going to stamp here. And then I'm going to set that aside because I want it to dry, and I will show you why in a minute. And I'm going to take and go ahead and get the front of my envelope going. I, have I ever mentioned that garden green is like my least favorite of the greens? I don't know. It just seems kind of blah. But that's just me. I much prefer Mossy Meadow and Evening Evergreen and things like that. Thank you, Sarah. Thanks, Karen. Thanks, Debbie. Okay, now I'm going to take my little berries right here and for the envelope, and I'm kind of letting, I'm letting the inside dry. That's what we're doing right now. If you haven't noticed, that's what we're doing. So we're going to, and I'll show you why in just a second. So I'm going to stamp this in Cherry Cobbler right there like that. And then I'm going to take my light Cherry Cobbler blend and lightly color these these little berries like this. So it's tone on tone, but the Cherry Cobbler blend has a little different value than the ink. So you're going to see a little bit, not a lot, but a little. Okay. And then because I can and I've got it out, why don't I just take care of my envelope flap right here? Thank you, Jean. Appreciate it. I'm going, it's a bit flat, isn't it? Uh, not, what's flat? Not sure what flat is, or is that, is the sarc, is there sarcasm there, Donna, and it's just not coming through? I'm not sure. Help me, help me, Donna, help me. Okay. So I'm just doing this right now because I really am letting that green, the garden green. Yes, it is a little flat. It's like red and green. It. It's like you don't even need to put garden. It's just green. It's just green. Yeah, it's not my favorite. All right, so I've got a little more of the uh, DSP. This is the one that has this design on the back, so it's the same that was on my card front. Does it really matter? No. You could probably use any of the woods that you have, any of them at all. Any wood, because they're all gray and white, and that is very, very nice. I do love... I really love the Heart and Home DSP. It is one of my favorite DSPs, maybe ever. I mean, I don't want to, that seems, that's like, that's like a big statement right there, but maybe ever. Okay. Now, don't forget the beauty of stamping on DSP. Yeah, so here, Mary, this is what you do. If you look, can you see that I'm not right at the top of the flap? There's a little gap. If you run this right up to the top uh, where the fold is, then you're going to see that. But if you leave it down a little ways, then when you get those thicker cards in, it, it'll be a little better. And you may still have to go back with a little touch-up glue because sometimes, you know, it, it just is what it is. But usually if you just cheat that down, like a 16th or a, even an 8th. You could even go an 8th, especially with a color that's so close to the white of the envelope. You'll, they'll never see it. They'll never see it. Okay. Yes, Donna, it's a new DSP. It's the Heart and Home DSP from the January to June uh, mini catalog coming out on the 4th of January. So I am just going to repeat this here. like that, and then the same with the berries, like that.
that, and then I'm going to clean that because I'm going to use it with Versamark in just a second. All right, let me close up some ink pads. Some ink pads, ink pads. Yep, the Heart and Home DSP with the Blessings of Home. It's got the it's in the suite with the Blessings of Home bundle and the Honey Bee Home bundle. So, it's going to be a heavy favorite. Donna, have you got a catalog? If you don't, hit me up with a mailing address. I'll be happy to mail you one. All right, and I'm just coloring this. Do kind of be light. Don't be scrubbing on it because you don't... It would have to go through a lot of layers here to get down and bleed through the back of the envelope. But, um, you know, don't, don't, push, don't push your luck. All right, so now our envelope is done. What I'm going to do is on my inside, I'm going to heat emboss that berry in gold. Hey, Carol. Yeah, it's, uh, you'll see it. You'll see it and you will love it. I know you will. Okay. Now, I've got my berries. I've got my Versamark. And I'm just going to stamp them right here like so. and sprinkle some gold embossing powder on them. Close this. Guess what happens if you turn your heat tool on right over the top of your embossing, full, embossing powder container? Yes. It's like a blizzard, but not very pleasant. All right. Oh, good. Okay, Donna. I had forgotten that entirely. So, good call. All right. I've got all the excess off. No, I don't. No, I don't. Hang on. Get, let Wait, wait. We have an excess embossing powder problem. I have one of those high dollar. I think I paid 99 cents for like five brushes. So real high end. Never going to paint with them. It's going to get hot. I mean, loud and I'm going to emboss that. You know, most many of us, this was one of the firstest, most excitingest things that we did when making cards was heat emboss, because watch that, that's like magic, man. It's magic for the season. Okay, and I'm just gonna go on the other side a little bit just to, it curls a little bit so you can kind of heat up the back side and help it straighten out a little bit. All right, there we go. Yes, ma'am, you are correct. A mess is exactly right. All right, here's another tip. Don't try to color your embossed images with your Stampin' Blend. The Stampin' Blend is an alcohol marker and it has a um, adverse reaction with the embossing. You can do it, but you have to be very, very careful. You really don't want to get this ink on that embossing, okay? Hence the reason I am using the Stampin' Write marker. But it has its own thing that I'm gonna show you here in just a second. I'm just coloring it. You can see, maybe you can't see. Can you see how different the Cherry Cobbler is from the marker versus the Stampin' Blend? So it's very interesting. You can get multiple levels of color if you've got the blends, the ink, and the marker, you can get all sorts of different variations, depths of color in one color. All right, so I'm being careful because ink, even this ink, on the embossed image doesn't dry good. So when you go, oh, that's so pretty, and you rub your thumb over it like, ah, I'm amazing, oh, then you're going to have a little problem. So... I tend to take a paper towel and just do that so that when I'm putting it into my card base, uh, pick up string, but oh, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. All right, so Rebecca, what happens? Uh, it hap what happens if you blow your heat tool over your embossing powder? You get a hot mess. See what I did there? Heat embossing, heat tool, hot mess. 
It, it was a joke. It was real funny. Real funny. I don't know. I can't tell if anybody's laughing or not. All right. We're just going to use a little liquid glue and put this on our cherry cobbler, cherry cobbler mat. Oh, look, that's handy. I made it actually landscape. That's, that's good. That's a good. And then we'll do the back. No, ink on embossing powder. Oh, so what happens is if you get this marker on this embossing powder when it's all shiny, it doesn't dry. So when you do this like that, it smears the ink. I, I know this because I did it on my sample. Fortunately, it was just a little, and I was able to erase it with my, with my um, sand eraser. But you can get more than you bargained for, I'm just saying. Okay, so now we're just going to put this into our card base. This is a basic gray card base. And we'll get our front on. And since our envelope is already done, we're going to be done. We're going to be done. we would be done. Ooh, I'm over time a little bit. Oh, well. Nobody has anything to do. You can spend your whole evening with me. I'm going to put one more of these little doohickeys right there. And markers, markers, alcohol markers. Oh, um, if you try to use the um, alcohol markers, the stamp and blends on an embossed image, if you get it on the embossing, it has like an adverse chemical reaction and it will smear the embossing. I know this because I did try it back when I was just a youngin, and it doesn't really work so good. You can do it if you're really, really careful, but you really don't want to go over the embossed image, the embossed part of the image. You really don't want to go over the embossed part of the image with it if you can help it at all. All right, I'm using black dimensionals here. Why? I don't know. Because it just seemed right. Cherry cobbler, basic gray, just seemed like the right thing to do. You can do you and do whatever color comes to hand. It's 20 to 1. Yep, I'd be in bed too, and I don't even think I'd be watching a card maker. But I appreciate that very much, Donna. I appreciate that you're doing it. And there we go going to pop that right on. What happened here? Hey, hey, you. Apparently we need a little more glue. Huh. Well, there was a credibility failure for Mary, huh? All right. Get back on there and think about what you've done. Just sit right there in time out. Okay. It'll be dry eventually. All righty. So there we go. Two more Christmas cards. Yay, me. Yay. Yay, me. Of course, they'll never get there, but that's okay. That's not important. That'll be the thought that counts. They'll get it in January and be like, oh, that's so beautiful. All right, guys. I appreciate you, and I will see you on Thursday for our YouTube video. Hope you have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your weekend. Yep, Amy, <laughs> I may have to use a glue dot, yes. Uh, have a good rest of your weekend and a good start to your week and uh, enjoy the preparations for Christmas. Thanks so much, y'all. See ya. Bye.